So, what have I got in my hands today? I've got here a DAC for a Raspberry Pi. I bought this off uh, a company called Fastech, off their website. Um, received it uh, just a few days ago and it seems to be dead on arrival. Now, I um, have contacted uh, Fastech, tic tac a couple of times on the email. They don't want to replace the device at this stage. They suggested um, sending them photographs and maybe uploading a video of the problem. Um, so I did. I sent them a couple of photographs. And not too sure how that helps. I mean, I did say that this component here was getting very hot. And they then suggested that I get a local repair technician to take a look at it. Well, look for a $30 board. Uh, I think that was uh, $30 Australian. Yeah, it's just um, just not worth it. I would expect them really just to, to replace this. Um, but not prepared to do that. So, yeah, let me have a look at this board, see if I can fix it. Uh, in the meantime, I suggest that you don't buy anything from FastTech. Anyway, so looking at the board and what it's supposed to do. So if I just bring my uh, sort of Raspberry Pi in here. I'm using this Raspberry Pi as a personal video recorder come TV watching thingy and uh, as you may or may not know so of course you can get the sound out through the HDMI and that would go through to the TV speakers fine but this particular unit I'm playing through an old computer monitor and I'm wanting to use the uh, analog uh, audio as an output. The analog audio output on these Raspberry Pis is pretty poor. I'm not going to go into the details as to why or how we can get around that really. Uh, but um, it's it's a fairly well known thing that you know just the implementation of the analog side of the audio is quite poor. And one of the solutions is to purchase a board such as this. It's plugged directly into uh, the Raspberry Pi as a top hat and it uses I squared C to get the uh, out sound out through this chip. Now the chip, if I can maybe bring this further, maybe I can zoom in a little bit, wait for it to uh, accommodate for the change in focus. But uh, that chip there is a PCM5122 and that's obviously the, the heart and soul of this particular unit. And actually looking around this unit, um, if the uh, names on some of these components can be believed okay, they are actually used quite high quality components. We've got a Nishion uh, chemical um, electrolytic capacitors here. We've got, um, you may not be able to see there, sorry my fingers in the way, Wema branded uh, capacitors on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, for under $30 Australian, not a bad investment, but yeah, it has to work, doesn't it, really? So yes, as I uh, plug this in, I'll just zoom out a little bit more to get more of that in focus or more in the screen. Um, as I plugged it in, I immediately noticed, A, there was no lights came up on the unit, and I believe this diode up here should illuminate. And um, I just happened to, to touch this component and it was, yeah, too hot to touch. So 60 plus degrees centigrade, I immediately disconnected everything. Luckily, I don't seem to have killed the Raspberry Pi, uh, but this, this board is no good. So, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to desolder this first component here, see whether I can determine whether that's still working, and, yeah, just take it from there. Apologies for the noisy fan and what have you. This is the uh, solder sucker that I'm going to try and use to remove this component. This component I'm taking out actually is a, a Morn Sun DC to DC converter and that's actually 5 volts to 5 volts so I guess it's supposed to be providing some sort of smoothing on the input. I have read on some blogs though that this is pretty uh, superfluous component so I'd be interested if this is indeed faulty that if I just sort of leave it out, link it out, um, see whether the device still works without it anyway. So here we go. I just put a bit of extra solder on like that to try and get that to flow nicely. Yeah, that's not pulling all the soft solder off unfortunately. most of it out.
So that was expected. That was a bit of a struggle to uh, get that four-legged component out. The holes in the printer circuit board are only big enough for those four legs. Uh, but anyway, there we have it. It's, it's out. Hopefully uh, not done any damage to the board, I don't think. And this component, albeit the legs are a little bit sort of... Uh, how are you doing? But uh, we've got it out so I can test it now. So just to review, yes, it's a Monson DC to DC uh, converter and the part number is B0505S-1W, 1W being 1 watt. Uh, the 0505 is the input voltage and the output voltage. So yeah, it's not actually converting from anything to anything. It's just some sort of mm -mm, smoothing, isolating. I don't know what the sort of construction of this uh, little block is on the inside. Anyway, let's get it tested. So I just looked up the uh, data sheet and uh, this first pin is ground. The next one in is Vint. So I'm just going to use a couple of short wires. Temporarily this grey can be the ground. Oh dear, come on Simon. Apologies about the budgie soldering, but this really is only temporary. That looks okay for a test. Let's play some power. Whoa! Sorry, just got this power supply. It's got some beefy capacitors on the input. Uh, just a bit of spark from the. Uh... Yeah, we've got five volts. Out. That's hot already. This really does look like a. And there's a bit of a hmm smell. Let me see if I can't. No, I can't really control the current going into that thing. I'd say that this is definitely cooked. Definitely cooked. I'm not going to even bother testing it anymore. Let's see if I can't make the modifications to the board as I suggested earlier that were on the internet. So let me just look those up again review those and see if we can't make some changes here. Hopefully this component in going bad hasn't damaged anything else on this board or certainly not anything else that I'm interested in. There is actually a 3.3 volt regulator on here too so I'm hoping that this this is not uh, cactus as well. Let's have a go anyway. Okay so I've got the um other component out that I want to remove and that's this ferrite bead that was in this location R8 here. I'm going to make the minimum amount of changes to see whether the board works and the, that sort of minimum amount at this stage is just going to be to, uh, to place a, a link in the place of R8 and that uh, ferrite bead and to short out the inputs and outputs with a zero ohm resistor and then we'll apply 5 volts to the um, input and we'll see whether we get this diode lighting up which would suggest that the 3 volt regulator, this SOT23 device here, U1, is still working. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, we've got the... I was about to say the live and the neutral, but um, yeah, we've got the 5 volts and the ground just tacked on here. So let's power on this power supply to give it 5 volts. 1, 2, 3. OK. Now that looks a bit more interesting, doesn't it? We seem to have D1 illuminated. So that's, um, that's a positive sign. Whether it's still working or not, I don't know. But uh, it certainly looks like that 3.3 SOT23 regulator down here is uh, still working. I guess I can give that a quick probe to see whether... I can see any voltage on there, see if I can do that quickly. So 
just working under this microscope here, so it's a little bit tricky. So this is going to be the ground. I have no idea which is the output. Okay, we need 1.2 volts on there. That's maybe it's not a 3.3 volt regulator. Oh yeah, no, that's 3.3, or rather 3.279 volts. Cool, alright, that looks like it's working. I'm now confident probably in making some of the other amendments that this website recommended, or this blog recommended, so I think I'll do those now. Okay, so catching up on the modifications, I've added the capacitor in here, electrolytic 10 volt 220 microfarad capacitor. This is on the between the plus and the negative on the output side of what used to be the DC to DC regulator. So hopefully that will smooth the DC going into the regulator. On recommendation I've removed C1. Uh, the recommendation there, if I'm reading off the page, says uh, C1 small cap input 5 volt side to ground plane, remove it, no need to feed input side noise directly to our nice ground audio. Anyway, so removed it, gone. The other thing was just to, there was a ferrite bead in this location here. That has been removed and replaced with a zero ohm resistor. Again, the recommendation on the website is to remove it. Um, the regulator should perform better when it can see the output side apparently so again I'm, I'm sort of this is uh, somebody else's experience and I'm just passing on here anyway let's um, I'm just going to leave it at that there were some other recommendations and that was to remove that tantalum capacitor I'll just leave that in there for the moment also uh, there's a recommendation to change this capacitor for uh, 220 microfarad 10 volt now this is a 10 microfarad 50 volt so I'd, I'd just like to maybe do a little bit more checking on here to make sure because it's obviously it's a 50 volt capacitor I don't really fancy changing that for 10 volt one just at this stage without confirming that that's indeed the correct size to, to use there so that's all the changes I'm going to make I'm going to get this connected up make a few changes to the software configuration and see whether this works So here we are inside, I've got the new deck mounted up on top of the Raspberry Pi, just put a couple of spaces in there. My apologies for the profusion of wires and what have you. Um, I will be getting this packaged up, but I really need to get it working first. So what we've got is a, a wide ethernet, we've got a, an infrared receiver so I can change the channels on the TV and, and do all the sort of uh, remote functions. Connection through to the monitor, HDMI. This is the audio output from the, the new DAC card, and then this is the power card, uh, power line. So here we are zoomed out a bit. You can see obviously the monitor, the two speakers, the satellite speakers. There is actually a subwoofer just down below, so it gives a reasonably good base. Everything's loaded up and logged in. I'm just going to start up uh, an album track which is quite quiet. Hopefully YouTube doesn't pick it up on copyright, but maybe it does. Let's see. Um, I'm just going to crank the volume up because it's quite a quiet track to start off with. So yeah, look, that sound is much, much better than it was plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi audio out, the analog audio out, that is. There's no hissing really to talk of, no pops, clicks, rattles or anything like that. So look, it's, uh, it's a shame it didn't work out of the box, but those modifications, I guess I'd have to defer to better audiophile electronic engineers than myself and say so they seem to work and the output is very listenable. So I hope you liked the video. Give us a thumbs up. If you did, if you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. Um, also make a comment, see whether I can uh, answer some of your questions. Anyway, see you on the next one. Ta-ra. Bye.